Hello everybody and welcome to your Venus and Scorpio retrograde tarot reading. So I have to give a brief intro about this video and how it works, um, so please just bear with me. I know nobody likes intros, but this is actually about the reading, so um, any question you have will be addressed here and you won't have to ask it later. Um, this reading is, con is for your Venus sign. It's not your sun, not your moon, not your rising. This reading is intended for your Venus sign since Venus is actually going retrograde. Now, if you don't know what your Venus sign is, I've left a link for a free natal chart in the description box below this video. And you'll be able to see, you know, which house and sign your Venus occupies. Now, if you do not have your actual birth time, that's okay. You'll still see which sign Venus rules as being ruled under in your natal chart. You just won't have an accurate view of which house Venus falls into, all right? You need your birth time for um, your houses to be precise, but um, you will definitely see w which sign Venus sits in in your natal chart. So with that said, um, Venus will go retrograde on October 5th. She's going to retrograde all the way back through Scorpio, which is the 8th house, and she will return to the 7th house of Libra on October 31st, where she will continue her retrograde all the way back through Libra until November 16th. Venus returns direct on the 16th of November, and um, she will begin her forward movement through Libra once again. She will um, re-enter Scorpio on December 2nd, and then finally in uh, January of 2019, she will move into Sagittarius, which will complete a very long transit between the 7th and 8th house energies. Um, because we Venus is currently in Scorpio, she was in Libra, and so she's almost out of Scorpio, but here she's going to backtrack all the way through, all the way back through Libra. Now, um, astrologically wise, the seventh house is about relationships and partnerships and balance, and then the eighth house is, you know, intensity, transformation, endings, beginnings, shared resources, you know, just a lot of deep, deep, intense energy. So this retrograde is truly about a powerful release and big time change um, in that 7th, 8th house energy, as well as wherever Venus sits in your natal chart and which houses in your natal chart are ruled um, by Libra and Scorpio, okay? So... This, you will notice this energy playing out <clears throat> in your relationships, in like resources, shared resources, where you need change and transformation in your life, okay? But in your personal natal chart, where Libra and Scorpio are and where Venus is, is also going to be a lot of powerful energy for you. So I highly recommend you check out your natal chart with that link if you don't know it very well and again unfortunately if you do not have your birth time you will not be able to see that the house is precisely okay you'll be able to see where your which sign venus sits in but the house will not be accurate unless you have your birth time okay so with that said i will get started with your readings Hello and welcome to those of you who have your Venus in Sagittarius. Let's see how this retrograde is going to affect you. This um, I'm going to start with what we're working on during, you know, as Venus is moving through Scorpio and as she returns to Libra since retrogrades are all about review, reassessment, realignment. To move us on to bigger and better things. So, those of you that have Venus in Sagittarius natally, um, you're very, very high spirited. You love deeply. You are incredibly passionate yet wise in matters of the heart. Okay, so let's see what's going on for you guys during this retrograde. Okay, so during Scorpio retrograde, we have, well, as Venus is moving through Scorpio, we have affirm, 
Say this mantra aloud, I am successful in all that I do. By affirming this and visualizing, you plant the seeds for positive outcome. So you are being called to focus on your own thoughts and expectations in regards to relationships, okay? But also in the area of your natal chart where Venus sits. You know, um, well, I guess Sagittarius, duh, hello. I mean, um, also where Libra and um, Scorpio are in your chart, you know, which houses do they occupy? Which house is Venus occupying for you? Because this is calling your attention to say, you know, do you have a lot of doubts and pessimism and low expectations of you know, your relationships in general and relationships, I mean, friendships, family ships, co-worker relationships, romantic relationships, all relationships are under focus right now. Okay. But also wherever, um, that Scorpio Libra energy is in your chart personally, along with Venus, we have that same exact kind of, um, focus where, what are you thinking about? What do you believe for yourself what are you willing to accept do you settle because you're scared that you're reaching too high or your ships never gonna come in this is all about your thoughts and the projected energy from your mind and your emotional body so as you as Venus moves through Scorpio she's really bringing your attention to this and saying you have more power and control over the way things happen and play out than you give yourself credit for okay so as she moves um, on through Libra we have serenity avoid the drama that is near you and seek a path of peace calmness and serenity take a walk breathe deeply and be still so uh, with serenity coming through in Libra as the relationship energy I'm just saying that perhaps there is some relationships you need to trim up, trim out of your life. Um, you know, there's some negative relationships where it feeds this, where it feeds your own pessimism, your own negativity, your own small thoughts about yourself, okay? And it's like, this is what we want. We want happiness and we want serenity, right? So we have to reassess what's going on in your mental body. Seriously, over you know the next 30 days, really pay attention to all of your thoughts. Are you optimistic? Are you in belief? Are you positive? Or are you like, no, how can I be? Because all these things keep happening. Well, um, things are always going to happen. It's you've got to learn to start focusing on what's going right, and you know eventually you will find that you have more going right than you have going wrong. And you might start off having more going wrong than going right, but if you focus on what's going right and you're grateful and that's just where you're vibing, I promise you other things are going to start falling into place. And that's what I see here. It's like you're realizing how to soften um, your own energy, how to give more love to yourself, more love to your dreams, have better balance in relationships in general where, you know, you are willing to give and do and be but you need equal energy returned, and you're realizing that through um, Venus moving into Libra retrograde. Yeah, look at this. We have sanctuary, healing, safe haven, solace. Yes, Sagittarius. Some of you, I'm sorry I keep calling you Sagittarius, Sagittarius and Venus. Um, some of you need to really distance yourself from certain relationships. Like, they're causing you more harm than you give um, credit to or that you recognize, okay? So we had some cards fly out here. All right. So over here in Scorpio, we have the lion beings, authority, authenticity, and balance. And here we have trust, faith, surrender, and waves. So with these two cards coming out together, you've just got to really believe in yourself and trust the universe. Really trust the universe and know that what you want, 
Venus and Sagittarius, you can make happen for yourself. Um, whether this is a goal or dream associated to some other house in your natal chart, or this is all about your relationships. You know, whatever changes are taking place, this is saying, look, even if it makes you afraid, even if it seems unknown, you're not interested in the new or anything unfamiliar, it's like, nope, you've got to be willing to step into that because you have some uh, spiritual backing and there's some spiritual growth happening inside of you. And this is honestly pushing you into a place of much more peace and harmony within yourself as well as relationships that are far more balanced, okay? Here we have the mermaid, womb, flow, patience, and um, then here we have the cardinal, instinct, confidence, and timing. So these two cards paired up is saying, listen, even though you may be 100% on board and you want this and you want that and you're like, okay, I'm going to really pay attention to my thoughts. I'm going to do whatever I've got to do. This is a reminder that all things have a get station period, okay? And do not waver or lose faith in how long that truly takes for your relationship to get better, um, a relationship to come into your life, whether that be romance or friendship, or again, if this is attached to, you know, other areas of your natal chart, it's like, believe in yourself, don't let doubt in whatsoever, don't let, you know, the negative words um, or pessimism of another person shake you and rattle you of how you feel about you and what you think you can accomplish, okay? Seriously, it all starts with you, and the more you believe in yourself and the more you focus love on yourself, the more you just vibrate that and people naturally respond to that, okay? And also, the changes that need to be made, there are relationships that you've got to sever, you've got to let go of. Um, they're no longer serving you, and I think you know that. And there's other relationships that are meant to come into your life, okay? So over here, it's what do we've got to change or who needs to get out of our life in order for you to find your serenity, for you to find your balance within and not constantly question yourself. I just feel like there's some energy around you where you're constantly questioning yourself, okay? So let's see. Well, that facilitates you, triggers you to constantly question yourself somehow, some way. So let's see what comes out in the tarot. All right, so we have the three of pentacles. Yep, this comes back to this affirmation about where you are feeding your energy mentally, emotionally, as well as your, um, you know, material resources. It's like there's a lot of giving here in this card. So it might be that you are giving a bit too much where you aren't getting a whole lot back, okay? Yeah, because next we have this Eight of Swords. So this could be where maybe you only feel it intuitively that maybe you're being taken advantage of or things are just not quite right, but you can't really see it or you don't want to see it, okay? It could be one or the other, but you definitely feel within that, you know, something is off. Something's out of balance here. Yeah, because look, here we have the hanged man. This is all about coming into, you know, a new perception. We've got to take a step back. We've got to have a rest here. All things move in divine timing. And lastly, we have this um, king of swords. Now, because we're doing Venus signs, if you're an air sign, this is an especially powerful reading for you, obviously. Um, as this represents Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, or you could um, be dealing predominantly with the Gemini, Libra, Aquarius uh, with whatever this is, whether it's seventh, eighth house energy, relationship focus, um, or this is about some other area of your life. It's pretty much the same message to me. It's like you are giving and doing more, okay? and you don't recognize it, or if you do, it's like you don't want to accept it. Some of you really aren't aware. You just are sad. You're depressed. You feel unappreciated, unloved, and you're like, what's wrong? And 
what's wrong is who you're dealing with. It has nothing to do with you, and you kind of have a sense inside that maybe that's it, but, you know, you're trying to be fair, and the truth is, you know, if somebody's just taking from you, somebody's putting you down, somebody is not supportive, laughs at your dreams, that is not a person that's good for you. Even if you have a great connection, even if you really love them, even if they're a family member, like, it's not a good relationship for you. It holds you back. It holds you down, okay? It truly does. And what I see here is there's a lot more potential for you um, wherever this is playing out in your life. There's more potential for you than what you are allowing in. And it's like you've got to see that and it's time to really take a step back. I mean, we have the Four of Swords, Serenity, the Sanctuary card flew out. This is like big time pull back from everything, from people, from your own thoughts, from your desires, from your wishes, from your dreams. It's like pull back from all of that. We need to really reassess what it is we're asking for and what we want because a lot of what you think you want isn't truly authentic and genuine to your soul. It comes from other people's expectations of you or it's coming from what they want and you are trying to appease their desire. And this retrograde is all about you coming into yourself and being true to you first and foremost. And if you are involved in situations or relationships where they're taking way more, it's time to really pull yourself back and balance things out and let them have a taste of what it's like without all of your support and energy and love, okay? And because, man, this is just like, over here, it's like you've got to see yourself, and over here, it's like you've got to pull back from situations, and in doing so, you come into a new perception here, okay? And in that place, it's just easier. It's like you know what you want to do, but also, um, there's going to be new ideas, new dreams that you desire through this retrograde, okay, because you're reassessing. And over here, you've got to realize you have to give everything ample time to establish itself, to grow roots, and then to grow up and out and bloom, okay? Everything is a cycle. Everything has a process of time that is required from start to completion. So, you know, even if you're gung-ho and excited after you go through all this energy because, you know, as soon as we're done with this retrograde, Venus is moving into Sagittarius, okay? So um, you will feel quite empowered, very passionate at that point in time. And um, I feel like just, you know, these next couple months till the end of the year, just really go with the flow, let things be as they are, pull your energy back and you know, detach from people that make you, well, I shouldn't say make you, that trigger you to feel negative, to feel down, to feel pessimistic, to feel depressed. Like, really get away from any sort of thoughts like that and have a lot of belief and confidence in yourself, okay? So let's see what the outcome is um, as Venus moves into Sagittarius in 2019. <clears throat> Step out of your comfort zone. Yep, look at that. It's time to let go of what is familiar. And this is kind of going to naturally happen because North Node is like your destiny, which you're working on this life, which you're reaching for. So, yes, just, you know, really clean up your thoughts, your emotions, your energy, and detach from people who sabotage you sap you, drain you down, okay, recognize the uh, essence of divine timing, and be willing to take a risk, even if it's completely like brand new, never touched before, never tried before, do it. With this coming out as your outcome, do it, okay? So that is your reading for Venus retrograding through Scorpio and Libra for all of those who have Venus in Sagittarius. I am wishing you all the very best. Take care.